I lived in Toronto for at least five years of my life from 2000 to 2001. And I'll never forget that right before the 9-11, another disaster that happened. Uh, August 23rd, nobody even remembers in Canada, but to me that was one amazing day. Why? Because amazing story took place in Toronto. What happened is that flight number 236 was taking off from Pearson's International Airport in Toronto on the way to Portugal. So they had to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And they had 303 or 304 passengers and crew on that flight. And how do I know about the story? Because it was all over the news in every country. And so the flight was going well. They took off from the, one of the largest airports. They were gaining altitude. And suddenly, somewhere between Toronto and Portugal, the less experienced officer, the assistant to the senior pilot said, hey, sir, I'm so sorry, but I know I'm new to this game. But according to our computers, we we're running out of fuel. And the senior pilot from the records turned to the young guy and says, listen, it's impossible. It totally, it's totally impossible. When we left the airport, I watched how our tanks were filled with gas. I am sure, I am sure that something must be wrong with the gauges. And, and the less experienced pilot said, I don't know, maybe we should go and check. So they went literally going through from window to window seat and all the passengers were a little bit nervous about that and and they were not giving any explanation but what they were trying to see if there's any leakage because if they are losing that much fuel that must mean that there's some big hole appeared in the wings and all the fuel is coming out but it was dark already so they didn't see anything they continued to fly and of course this was one of their biggest mistakes not to turn around quickly and come back to the nearest airport but they decided to go and just fly over the ocean. And they were 1,500 kilometers away from Portugal, 11 kilometers above the ocean. Again, 304 passengers and crew. And suddenly, at 6.13 a.m., now remember, when you fly through the Atlantic, you actually gain time. It is tomorrow is already there in Europe. We are hours behind. So they flew several hours at night, and suddenly, at 6.13 a.m., the right engine just died. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like flying. This is one of my still fears. I do fly, but I, every time there's turbulence, I pray like crazy. Lord, I'll be good from now on. Lord, please, I'll give more than my tithe to you. And I, I don't like flying. That's why I drive everywhere. And then at 626, the only engine they had left suddenly cuts out in the middle of the ocean. Now, folks, I want you to know that this story is well documented. You can watch it even on YouTube. But it touched my heart because the 300 passengers and crew, it says that literally it was, you could hear a pin drop. It became so quiet. And suddenly you could hear people cry. And suddenly the people who use God only as a curse word for the first time, they said a prayer. And there was a, like a prayer meeting going on. For the first time, people who have never even went to church, read the Bible, they simply said, Lord, help us, save us. It was really a moving moment for me just to see that. My only question to you, why do we turn to God only in those moments? Why don't we come to Him before a disaster happens? But they were calling on His name, quiet, crying, confessing their sins for the first time. And today I don't have some kind of Please know that this seminar is not here to force you and put religion on you. But in every seminar, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever, even without reading the Bible, have you ever tried praying? Simply say, God, help me. I have a test tomorrow. Lord, help me. I'm looking for a spouse. Lord, help me. My finances are in turmoil. I need your help. I want to say to you, that when you go home today, just try to raise your voice quietly. You can just say, Lord, help me. Whatever you're going through. And let me tell you something amazing thing happened. You see the pilots who were flying this jet, even though the senior pilot was a stubborn old man and, uh, and his, his less experienced pilot, just a junior, they decided to just glide. And I don't know if you knew that all the modern airplanes, they have the system where in case the engine dies, they have this backup system where a little propeller comes out from the bottom and it's like a generator. So as the airplane glides, and I didn't know that you can glide, but they had to fly right between 290 and 370 kilometers an hour. And slowly they're descending, but they're gliding and, as, and they can turn the plane because the generator is producing. Now wind power turns into electrical power. 
I never knew that the modern engineering is doing that, but they can do this, so they can blight. But they're surely coming down. And uh, coming down where? Uh, and the less experienced officer, the young guy, he looked on the map and he says, there's a little tiny island. And, and it looks like we may be able to make it. Now remember, this is in the middle of, of nowhere. And sure enough, it was 150 kilometers away. And by this time, they were already breaking all kinds of world records of flying with no engine power, 300 and passengers and crew. One of the largest airplanes with so many passengers. And so they informed the passengers. They said, we're going to try to land. Now everybody go through all the procedures. And once again, people were praying, people were crying. And sure enough, they saw the island and they set a new record. They were able to glide for 18 minutes with no engine powers. And so what happened next is that uh, the people on the island even came out because on the radio it was announced that a big jet is coming down. Everybody came to see the big bang. They thought this is it. They want to see, they wanna, this is a, sometimes bad news brings a lot of uh, people. And unfortunately from, from experience, they tried to land these jets before, but it never succeeded. So here is the tarmac of this airplane flight from Toronto. It hit the ground so hard, it literally destroyed the, the runway. It had to be repaved. You could see the tires missing. And the Bible tells us, and this is the end, that there will be great distress right before the end. Great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. Yes, the Bible says if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So God says, don't be afraid because I've got you. I am the master. Times people read this and they think that the terrible times, meaning wars, disasters. I want to give you a little hint to what's going to happen on Sunday. Terrible times for God is not necessarily wars because wars are started by this. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. According to the Bible, this is what is the most terrible in the world. All these other things that are happening, wars and fighting, they are only the symptoms of the real problem, which is the human heart. And as we now go back to flight number 236, Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that for the first time in the history of aviation, it was only the Canadian pilots for the first time in the history of the world that were able to land successfully a full jet of 304 passengers without even one injury. All 304 passengers live to tell the story and you can go on YouTube and watch the whole thing. And of course, the, the pilot was immediately proclaimed as the hero, but very quickly they brought him to court to see how did he not turn around? How come he did this and that? At the end of the story, it happened to be that the mechanic, when he was fixing the airplane, he put the wrong tube that was rubbing in the engine. And he said, I'll cut corners here. It almost, it's almost the same, little shorter, but we'll squeeze it. And that's the tube that came out and all the fuel was dumped into the Atlantic Ocean. So it was not the pilot's fault. And so now today, those pilots are heroes. But friends, if this human being can be so inspiring. Today I want to say to you in the words of literally the Bible, because Jesus says to us, who is the pilot of your life? Who is the pilot of your life today? The Bible says you do not have to be worried about the, the end times or tribulation because Jesus says in 2 Chronicles, listen to this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins, and here it is, restore their land.